the name of Almighty Allah, who is merciful, the most beneficent, the most benevolent. Uh, in our today's session, uh, we will discuss committees of the board. As we know that uh, the members of the board of directors, there are two types of uh, mainly members. They are executive members and uh, non-executive members. And their uh, selection criteria we have already discussed. And we know that uh, these members, they have different qualification background. Uh, and keeping in view their expertise, keeping in view their qualification, keeping in view their past experience, keeping in view your, their length of service, keeping in view all these facets of their professional career, uh, they are in fact uh, given uh, the rules to, to be the head of different committees. These are committees which are in fact uh, uh, given specific tasks in order to facilitate the working of uh, board of directors. Uh, in our today's session, uh, we will discuss different committees. In corporate governance regulations, uh, regulation 27, that deals with the committees to the board and uh, regulation 27 specifically deal with the audit committee. Basically, this is chapter nine of uh, these regulations. Uh, underneath this chapter, we will, uh, and uh, we will be able to discuss different committees. So Regulation 27 deals with audit committee. As I said earlier, let me uh, ask one of the participants, Mr. Abdullah Maksud, to do the reading for uh, the participants. Mr. Abdullah, please. Sure, sir. Audit committee. It is a mandatory that the audit committee shall be constituted by the board keeping in view the following requirements. The board shall establish an audit committee of at least three members comprom comprising of non-executive directors and at least one independent director. Chairman of the committee shall be an independent director who shall not be chairman of the board. The board shall satisfy itself that at least one member of order committee shall be financially literate. Explanation for the purposes of this clause, the expansion financial literate means a person who is a member of recognized body of professional accountants or has a postgraduate degree in finance from a university or equivalent institution, either in Pakistan or abroad, recognized by the higher education. That's right. B, that is clause B of regulation 27. Yes, Mr. Abdullah Maksud. Yes, sir. By Higher Education Com Commission of Pakistan has at least 10 years of experience as audit committee member or at least 20 years of senior management experience in overseeing of financial audit related matters. The audit committee of a company shall appoint a secretary of the committee who shall either be the company secretary or head of internal audit. And then we have uh, a sub-regulation 2, uh, which in fact uh, enumerate uh, 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 the, the further details pertaining to the audit committee. We will go through them, but uh, let's have a small discussion on uh, uh, regulation sub-regulation 1 of regulation 27, which deals with the audit committee. And we got to know that uh, for, the, for the head of audit committee, uh, he cannot be the chairman board of directors. And uh, he has to be, uh, being, being the head, he has to be an independent director. And that is precisely for the reasons to make sure that uh, the work audit committee is transparent. Uh, the working of the audit committee is to safeguard the legitimate lawful interest of the stakeholders. And the purpose of the audit committee is to be fair, to be logical, to be transparent, uh, to, do the, to do the audit in a manner, not to safeguard the vested interests of any uh, uh, any vested interest, uh, you see, uh, there are people who are having uh, 
vested interest in the working uh, of the board of directors so just to make sure that they hold their functions in a manner which are transparent and which are for the betterment of the company not to safeguard the interests of the uh, vested interest holders so this is the audit committee and uh, let's move on and now uh, in the second uh, limb of this audit committee uh, we will have uh, discussed uh, on another vital aspect and that is that beside uh, uh, this in fact uh, aspect that what will be the composition of the audit committee or who will be the chairman of the audit committee who will be the secretary of the audit committee even company secretary can also be become the secretary of the audit committee he or she can be given this additional assignment now the second aspect of regulation 27 we will discuss in sub regulation 2 of regulation 27 it is uh, it reads uh, precisely uh, it is mandatory that meetings of the audit committee shall be held as per the following requirements now underneath uh, these requirements are discussed at length and uh, let me invite another member of our class uh, to do the reading ms afsha could you please uh, share uh, the reg sub regulation 2 of regulation 27 yes sir uh, it is mandatory that meetings uh, of the audit committee shall be held as per the following requirements number 1 the audit committee of a company shall shall meet at least once every quarter of the financial year these meetings shall be held prior to the approval of interim results of the company by its board and after completion of external audit number 2 a meeting of the audit committee shall also be held if requested by the external auditors head of internal audit or by chairman of audit committee thank you very much ms afsha and here uh, the uh, the mechanism is given that uh, how uh, many times in a year uh, the this audit committee is required to meet and as you know that uh, most of the companies they uh, in fact uh, uh, they uh, tabulate their quarterly or biannually or their quarter biannual or annual results uh, in order to apprise the stakeholders that uh, what is the uh, financial status of the company what is eps of the company for the given quarter which is earning per share uh, or uh, if this is uh, uh, loss per share or uh, uh, if the company has decided that uh, the earnings of the company are uh, of such quantum that uh, a dividend can be given to the shareholders then that this decision is based on the report compiled by the audit committee so prior to the meeting uh, of the board of directors uh, for all these purposes the audit committee is required to convene its meeting and look into the financial affairs uh, of the company and uh, now the uh, clause 3 actually we will have a look at uh, uh, clause 3 and uh, and clause 3 we have a couple of uh, uh, provisos given we will discuss uh, provisos as well one by one so let's have a look at uh, uh clause 3 of uh, sub regulation 2 of regulation 27 uh let me invite uh, another participant of uh, the class miss minail amir please uh, share this aspect of regulation uh 27 which deals with the audit committee please so which one are you talking about the third point yeah the third point please okay the head of internal audit and external auditor is represented by the in, uh, engagement partner or in his absence any other partner designated by the audit firm shall attend meetings of the audit committee at which issues if any relating to accounts and audits are discussed all right so, uh, accounts and audits uh, these are the two uh, vital facets of any company's financial working so uh, they they go in alignment they go in hand in hand and uh, this is how uh, uh, the report is tabulated now we have a number of uh, provisions uh, to go through uh, ms benail amir please continue with these pro provisions 
provided that chief executive officer and the finance uh, and the chief financial officer officer shall not be members of the audit committee but shall be available to attend its meetings at the invitation of the chairman of audit committee thank you very much provided uh, yes yes mr yes. nail please pause here for a minute you see chief financial officer uh, or chief executive officer of the company ceo of the company or chief financial officers they are uh, cfo of the company uh they are not the part of audit committee they but they have to make sure that they are available uh, uh they have to uh, uh make themselves available if need arises uh in order to advise the audit committee regarding the functions of uh, functions or duties of uh, chief financial officer or chief executive officer but they are uh, barred actually or there is a restriction imposed by this regulation number 27 that they themselves cannot become uh, the part and parcel of this audit committee because audit committee's main function is to have an overseeing status to be able to have an oversight on the financial and account matters uh, pertaining to the company's financial status so this is just to avoid the conflict of interest that chief financial officer if he is made member of the audit committee of course he will use his influence uh, to 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 uh, you see uh, to do things with the numbers uh, in order to portray or undermine any of his uh, uh, misconduct if there is any so in order to avoid that and in order to avoid the uh, you see the conflict of interest Uh, he is barred uh, to become the member uh, of this committee but he has to make himself available uh, when ever need arises in order to seek his uh, input now we have uh, another proviso given in regulation 27 uh, miss minai lamit please come to me provided further that at least once a year the audit committee <clears throat> shall meet the external auditors without the chief financial officer and the head of internal audit being present provided also that at least once a year the audit committee shall meet the head of internal audit and other members of the internal audit function without the cfo and external auditors being present absolutely right so you see it's not only the the audit mechanism is very comprehensive it's not only the internal auditors which are uh, uh, duty bound to audit the financial working or uh, 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 working relating to accounts of the company but also the external auditors are also engaged in order to gauge the performance of the company uh, and this is why and moreover whenever this internal uh, audit committee intends to hold a meeting with the external auditors the presence of a chief financial officer is barred uh, because is is in fact discouraged because uh, again as i said earlier that uh, the primary purpose of uh, the whole exercise is to make sure that uh, uh, the working of uh, the audit committee is transparent is fair and uh, this is to discourage uh, any conflict of interest so these are the primary facets uh, of uh, the audit committee so in our first uh, session we have discussed uh, the composition of the audit committee we have discussed uh, the number of time under these regulations audit committee is required to meet we have discussed that who are the persons barred from the from becoming the members of this audit committee so these are the certain facets we have discussed in our first session and uh, in our second session we will discuss at length uh, different other aspects of the audit committee and uh, uh, primarily uh, as it is being discussed that uh, since in board of directors we have people with different background in terms of qualification in terms of experience in terms of uh, their uh, understanding of uh, the functioning of uh, Uh, the corporate sector in terms of their experience working in the corporate sector as we have studied that there is a length of experience given in wh while uh, appointing someone as member board of directors so in this context the primary function is that those who are qualified those are who are experienced those who have uh, 
the understanding of uh, the corporate sector working they must be encouraged to become the part and parcel of board of directors and resultantly they become the members of uh, the uh, different committees including the audit committee and uh, the goal is the corporate governance the goal is uh, to ensure uh, the compliance of uh, these regulations uh, in order to uh, fulfill the legal liability so let's uh, uh, conclude here thank you very much for your participation